As we dive into the ocean, things get pretty strange. So many of the creatures don't look like they're even from this planet, and the deeper you go, the scarier it gets. I mean, just look at this thing. This is a recording from an oil drilling site, 7,800 feet below the surface, where it's pitch black and the pressure is about 250 times that of the surface. This freaky creature is a big fin squid, and we haven't seen that many of them, but we do know adults can grow to at least 40 foot long, which is bigger than a school bus. And the truth is, we don't know exactly how big these things can actually get but we do think they're not active predators which is why they just kind of hover around looking scary they let their tentacles drift down much like a jellyfish and wait for prey to come to them which they then quickly snatch and bring up to their beaks to feed on it'd be cool if it wasn't so terrifying and there's other freaky things to find when you get down this deep in the ocean this is a comb jelly and if there were ever a creature you just wouldn't believe exists until you saw it this would be it. These can be found way down in the depths and can get to at least 30,000 feet, which is deeper than Mount Everest is tall. Those flashing lights come from rows of cilia, which all move in sync, and they let the jelly move around, kind of like tiny little paddles, but they also refract light, which creates all of these colours, kind of like how a prism works. Some comb jellies also have bioluminescent abilities, producing blue or green light purely from chemical reactions. And here we can even see one very hungry comb jelly eating another comb jelly. So I guess it's lights out for this unfortunate chap. Time for something a bit more gross now. This not very nice looking mass of tentacles is the very well named spaghetti worm. Well done to whichever scientist came up with that. It might look like lots of different individual worms, but it's not. These tentacles expand from the head of the worm. So what you're looking at here is just one spaghetti worm reaching out all over the place. They usually stay buried in the sea floor with just these tentacles or filaments, which is their proper name, exposed to the world, reaching out to find tiny particles of organic matter to feed on. But they're not all super creepy like this one. Some are actually quite nice. Like this pink one here, it's actually kind of cute in its own creepy kind of way. So this is a fun little fish. I like these a lot. I know he looks looks kind of normal, maybe a little grumpy even, but looks can be deceiving. This is the sarcastic fringe head. Again, big credit to whichever scientist came up with that name. And when you upset this little fella, he really lets you know about it. I don't know about you, but that mouth massively reminds me of a certain Arnold Schwarzenegger fighting alien. You're one What's probably going on here is a female has laid her eggs in that crevice right there and this aggressive male will fiercely defend their nesting site. Which is actually quite nice really, so he might look a little scary but his heart's in the right place. This is a class of creature called Siphonophore and these are really, really awesome. They can be found pretty much anywhere in the ocean from tens of thousands of feet down right to the surface but what makes them super alien aside from their appearance is that these things aren't actually single creatures. They're actually a colony of teeny tiny little creatures called zooids. Each zooid has its own task in the colony and the combination of all the zooids working together makes these things that we know as siphonophores. And because of this unique structure, siphonophore can be really varied and become absolutely huge. This one is about 150 feet long. So yeah, pretty cool and also kind of dangerous. Siphonophore use stinging tentacles to paralyze their prey and the infamous man of war is actually a siphonophore. It's not a jellyfish like many people think and its sting is meant to be really, really painful. Now this guy looks like your typical big headed alien or a giant tadpole depending on your point of view, is the threadfin snailfish. And it can be found up to 10,000 feet below the surface. And down there, it's extremely cold. But this threadfin has an ingenious solution, employing antifreeze proteins in their own blood to prevent ice crystals from forming. It's a pretty cool fish, but since it's found so deep in the ocean, typically at least lower than 3,000 feet, there's very little video footage of this guy. But the increased use of deep sea submersibles means that even though we've known about this species for over 100 years, we're only recently getting these awesome images of it swimming around in its natural habitat. This is the nudibranch, but its more common name is a sea slug. They're one of the ocean's most colourful residents, and they're the only marine slug which lose their shell after maturing to adulthood. But that's okay because they have their own defense mechanism, which means they don't need a shell. These attractive little slugs recycle the toxins found in their prey, which they then concentrate in their own bodies after consuming, making them practically inedible. The aeolid nudibranch you see here has a particularly cool adaptation. It carefully consumes the stinging capsules from prey that stings and places these at the tip of their tentacle-like appendages to use as their own stingers, which is quite frankly incredible. So even though these awesome little slugs look attractive to us, what the vibrant colours are actually saying to potential predators is back off because I'm dangerous. 
and it works well because the nudibranch have very few natural predators as a result and they don't even have to carry around a big heavy shell on their back so well done nudibranch. This scrawny little thing is actually one of my favourite eels. They're found in the deep sea usually around 10,000 feet down. It's called a gulper eel for reasons that will become very apparent just about now. It's got a huge mouth and jaw, a little bit like a pelican. So when it approaches prey, it quickly opens its mouth, which creates a kind of vacuum suction effect in the water and sucks the prey into its mouth. So it can catch pretty big prey. The other cool thing about this eel is its stomach can also stretch, a bit like a snake. So you get strange instances like this fella, where there's a huge fish shape just bulging out of the eel's slender frame. Pretty weird, but also pretty cool. This creature is an absolute master of disguise. It's the stonefish and it looks exactly like, well, a stone. It's an ambush predator and it uses its impressive camouflage to hide from its prey, waiting until it's practically swimming right into its mouth before striking. It's also one of the most venomous fish in the sea, which is bad news for humans. It has vicious spines located on the top of its body and it rather likes to hide in shallow coastal zones, the same types where people also like to go for a nice relaxing swim. And since they're basically impossible to see, stings are fairly common, with around 30 hospitalizations in Australia every year alone. Although, to be fair, there's always going to be something in Australia that's gonna sting you. Now don't be fooled by this insanely beautiful octopus. What this rather gung-ho lady doesn't realize, or at least I assume she doesn't, is that she's holding one of the most venomous octopuses in the world. This is the blue ringed octopus. If you get bitten by this fella, you're in a lot of trouble particularly because you might not even realise it at first since their bite is usually painless, but you'd soon start to feel numb around the mouth, tongue, face and neck, and then you'll feel tight in the chest and probably have difficulty breathing. A bite from this guy can lead to respiratory failure in minutes, and so far there's been 11 recorded deaths as a result. So if any invading aliens are looking for efficient ways to wipe out humanity, they may well seek the advice of this gorgeous little octopus. Let's take a look at something a bit less attractive now. This is the immensely disturbing sea lamprey. It looks like a leech or even an eel, but it's actually a very primitive fish and it's enough to make you not want to go swimming at all. It's a parasite and it latches onto its prey using a mouth completely filled with horrendous teeth. And it can be quite a big issue because when they get too numerous, they can start having really bad effects on fish populations. So in areas where those fish have commercial value, there are big efforts to reduce the lamprey population. Oh, and there are also different variations of lamprey which are found in freshwater too, but they only go after cold bloody creatures most of the time anyway so you, you don't have to worry too much. This is a super weird shark that not that many people know about but they really should. The reason for that is probably because there's not much footage of them given the deep sea habitat of around 5,000 feet below the surface but this is the goblin shark and it's got an incredible feeding strategy. This ancient shark fires its whole jaw forward to capture its prey something that's known as slingshot feeding and it's provided the inspiration for one of Hollywood's most famous alien franchises Alien and it's pretty obvious to see why. But what's kind of ironic about that is the goblin shark has a 125 million year old lineage. It's one of the oldest sharks on earth, whilst our lineage of Homo sapiens is only about 300,000 years old. So the goblin shark would probably look at us very justifiably as pretty gosh darn alien, but hey, I'm the one making the video. If you like cool octopuses, then stick around because this is probably the coolest octopus in the sea. It's a class of octopus called the Dumbo octopus. And yes, it is literally named after the Disney character due to its large oversized fins, which do look a lot like Dumbo's ears. But what's particularly cool about these guys is the variety of different sizes and colors, from this rather spooky one, to this awesome purple one, to this unbelievably cute little orange one. They're found as deep as 15,000 feet, and tend to stay near the seabed where they hunt for little things to eat like worms and crustaceans. But when they're bored of the sea floor, they can use those awesome fins to flap their way through the water, looking a bit like a deep sea ghost. This is the world's largest jellyfish. It's the lion's main jellyfish. Its bell can be up to eight feet wide with tentacles stretching up to 120 feet, which is about 20 feet longer than a blue whale, or about the same as three school buses. And yes, they do sting. Thankfully, it's not typically a fatal sting, although it's reported to be extremely painful, which isn't really surprising when you look at it. This thing is just crazily big. It looks like a huge invading alien space colony, and you really don't have to be told that it's dangerous. But at the same time, I think it's somehow one of the most majestically beautiful things found in our oceans. Squid are pretty alien looking creatures to begin with, but it's not just the squid themselves I want to put on this list. It's 
it's actually their eggs, which they lay a heck of a lot of. As squid lay their eggs, the females keep hold of them, resulting in this insane gelatinous mass hanging from their body, containing tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of eggs. Once they're ready, and depending on the species of squid, they'll either attach these to something like rocks or seaweed, or they'll just release the eggs into the drifting currents. Of course, the bigger the squid, the bigger the eggs. Here's some footage of divers discovering what could be the egg sac of a giant squid. Luckily for these guys, squid aren't very caring mothers, and once they've released the sac, they don't protect the eggs any further, so these divers can relax, a little bit at least. Now if there were any poster boy or poster fish for deep sea creatures, it would have to be the sea devil anglerfish. This is one damn scary fish. This one's a female, and it's a very ingenious predator. It hangs a bioluminescent lure in front of its mouth, which contains bacteria that creates a distinct glow. In the pitch black of the deep sea, this glow stands out, attracting curious prey. And in the deep sea, it's generally a very good idea not to follow the light. If that wasn't already horrifying enough, the males of the species are much smaller and basically lead a parasitic life. Once they find a female, they'll latch onto her, eventually fusing right onto her body and entirely relying on her for sustenance. Over time, they just become a simple dangling appendage, serving only to provide sperm for reproduction. So yeah, a pretty horrific creature all around really, but still pretty awesome. Now here's a creature which looks like an alien straight out of Starship Troopers. This is a giant isopod, and it's a result of a deep sea phenomenon known as deep sea gigantism, which basically allows deep sea creatures like squid, whales and crustaceans like the isopod to grow to huge sizes. These guys primarily feed on dead and decaying bodies of marine animals, making them important scavengers in their ecosystem. However, they are also known to hunt live prey. Just take a look at this clip where we can see an isopod launch itself at a passing shark. And it might have good reason, because these creatures can go for crazy lengths of time without food, and I do mean crazy. Giant isopods in aquariums have been recorded as surviving four years without food. So if you hadn't eaten for a few years, you'd probably try and eat a shark too. This big fat blob is a sea cucumber. And if you thought it looks weird now, just wait to learn more about it. It's related to starfish and sea urchins, and although at first appearances it might seem pretty immobile, don't be deceived, because this thing is about as alien as sea creatures get. Sea cucumbers have five rows of feet, and these feet extend from their mouth to their anus, and they use their feet for movement and for feeding. But honestly, that's not even the weirdest thing about the sea cucumber. Look at this guy here. Now what's going on here is a defense mechanism sea cucumbers deploy where they expel their organs out of their anus. Not only does this understandably confuse the potential predator, but the organs are also sticky and sometimes toxic. So it basically just isn't very appetizing. Meanwhile, the sea cucumber will make a swift escape, or as swift as it can, and over time it will regenerate those lost organs. It is, without a doubt, one of the strangest defense mechanisms in the natural world, and if someone did base an alien film on it, it'd probably get criticized for being too unbelievable. But hey, there it is. If you want to see something truly alien, don't look up to the stars, just look below the waves. And if you're still watching, hopefully that means you if you've enjoyed the video and deemed it worthy enough of a like and subscribe, or you just got distracted and left the video playing, in which case I'm just talking to myself. Hopefully it's the former.